We're gonna sprout popcorn. We're gonna grow it into shoots. It's a microgreen. It's beautiful. It's even a centerpiece. It's gorgeous. Wait, you'll see. So half a cup of seed is what I'm using here. Half a cup of popcorn. And it's going in a bowl. And it's going to get soaked in water that is just on the cool side of tepid for eight to 12 hours. Stir them up to assure even water contact for all. And they're going to sit here with other soaking seeds. In the case of popcorn, we're actually going to wait 12 hours because it's a pretty hard seed on the outside and we want to give it time to truly absorb the water it wants. See in 12. I am going to move our soaking corn into a glass jar with a screen lid because as a hard seed, corn really benefits from the extra humidity in the jar. So it may, it'll sprout a little bit faster, may sprout a little bit faster. As a big seed, you don't have to worry about draining it as much as a small seed growing in a jar, which requires quite a lot of work. But with the corn, it's a simple process, an easy drain. putting my corn and the water into the jar it makes no difference. I'm just trying to minimize the loss of seed. I want no loss of seed. I could have just soaked this in the jar, obviously. I just wasn't thinking last night. That's fine for corn. That's all it takes. Okay. The seeds are so big that even if there is a little water left, they're not going to drown. I've tried to find a way to say this for years. I've always been unsuccessful. The bigger the seed, the less it will be covered by water that's left behind after a draining. With tiny seeds like alfalfa and broccoli and the like, a little bit of water left in the bottom is a deep pool to them. Not so with big seeds like beans or corn or even grains, so you can get away with less draining. Did I explain it that time in a way that's understandable? Our popcorn has sprouted enough that we're going to plant it now. Let's take a look. Now 
I just want the germ bulging. It's hard to convey this, but it's bulging. And I like that. That is the perfect time. So we are going to plant in a stainless steel sprouter. So I've got coconut coir, which I have already made ahead. Put that in. And I have some earthworm castings as well. generally do 20 to 25 percent by volume worm castings. I'm not being very scientific about it. I'm just mixing it together. Yeah, that's a good height. I like to fill close to the top. a little. Could do this ahead. Anyway, this is just what I do. Could make a bag that had 20% worm castings and the rest coir and you'd be set to go. But this is what I do. sometimes, like now, but it's irrelevant. I just like to touch seeds. Hmm. Too high for that. That's pressing on them. The reason that I water the seeds after planting them is just that I like to give them more water. That's the same reason that I rinse them before planting them. And it also helps them kind of just nestle into the planting medium. <clears throat> so that's the way I do it. Now these are going to sit and I will give them a rinse. Just because these are big seeds and I want to keep them moist until they get their roots into the medium at which point all I need is to keep the medium moist. Since coconut coir retains so much moisture, I have to do very little to keep the medium moist. These are big seeds and they'll demand a lot of moisture as the crop grows, but the coconut coir will do a lot of the work for me. Just the same, until the roots are buried in the medium, I will give a little rinse, just a light watering every 12 hours. Again, that's just to keep the seeds moist while they're getting their roots into the medium. 
I'm choosing not to cover with the plate because some of the shoots are already high enough that the plate is disrupting them. I don't want to hurt a little plant. So I'm going to use this tray and I'm propping it up a little bit so that it covers the tray. I'm just used to covering, so that's why I'm doing it. I'm running this other test with radish and I'm not covering it. And I may find out that something I've been doing for 25 years is pointless. It's been longer than 25 years, Gil. Even longer than that. It's, you can always learn, right? Look at that. It's, the, the hood is messing it, the, the lid is messing it up. I'm sorry, I can't, I'm not set up to like give you a perfect background. So we're going to actually leave this uncovered here. It's early, like I said yesterday. Actually, I will water it. I will water it. I think you can see that the plants are up so much that it's not as big a concern, but there's still roots floating around up there keep the seeds moist. Just a light watering. Bring those back here. We'll be back in 24 hours to look at our microgreens and see how they're doing. Our corn doesn't look like much, frankly, but that's typical of corn crops. I, like I say, I've never grown one without covering it for a while, but I don't think it needs anything. I really don't. And to prove the point, I'm not gonna do anything to it. It's heavy with water. I think the roots are yeah, I'm just going to think that everything is taking care of itself now. And we'll see. If that doesn't work, I'll make another video. We have our corn. Still looks pretty squirrely, but looking better. It's going to fill out. Something you definitely learn in growing things is patience. Sprouts can be incredibly quick and rewarding crops, but a lot of things require patience. It's good. Patience is a virtue. It looked really beautiful this afternoon. I took pictures. Maybe I can put them here. It's looking nicer. Definitely filling in. We'll see. We're not watering it. It's still heavy. We'll just see what it does. You could water it. There's some little ones in there. You don't really have to worry about these. They're not going to get through. They're kind of strong. But still water from the side. They're stronger that way. moisture if there's any seeds in need. Much fuller. They get much fuller. But Looking lovely. Go. It's a nice crop. It is a nice crop. Yep. I don't know. I think it's a great centerpiece. It's edible if you like that. You know, people do. It's a really great garnish. Big, you know, fancy chefs use it, but I just think it's beautiful. They are 
are looking marvelous. Are they? They are just beautiful. They are so beautiful. <laughs> just, man, they start out so spindly. Okay, I'm gonna give them some water. And now you get used to the weight. It feels like it's quite moist, but I'm gonna give it some water. going to keep growing them. You could certainly harvest them. They are totally prepared for that. I just want to max them out. I just want to see what I can make them do. And so this may be the last I show you of these until I come to cleaning up the sprouter. Um, but if you want to harvest, it's just a matter of cutting them with a sharp knife or a scissors. That's it. Just as close to the base as you can or I guess as close to the base as you want to. It would just be cutting right here. I just have to show you this. I just can't get over it every day. I'm just like, this stuff's just better every day. I don't know if you can really understand what an incredible centerpiece this is. I don't, I just, this is a centerpiece. It's just beautiful. It's got nothing bad going on. It's got red stems now in places. I mean, it just gets better every day. All right. It's just living out here right now. And I just haven't watered it in several days. It's still fine. Got to have been three, four days since I last watered it. There's the, there's the boss. There's the boss. And there's the boss's boss. Am I right? Are you the boss's boss? Oh. Let's see the big eyes. I know you don't like camera. So that's it. Popcorn shoots. Who would have thought of it? Um, Lori suggests cooking them too, but. I'm all about the centerpiece, honestly. I've told you up front, I don't eat them raw. They're just too sweet for me. A lot of people like them, but damn, they are beautiful. And now I still think it's incredible. How long has it been? This is a long lived centerpiece. I just gave it more water today. It's been at least a week since I watered it last. I guess I should present that to you on the middle of a table. That would probably be a better idea. Our corn shoots, still magnificent, but now turning color or browning on the edges in places. So I've got to get rid of these. That, how long? Did that last? Um, okay, so I want to see if this did any damage to the sprouter. It's a lot of root system. Okay, so I'm going to cut these off. Put the knife. That's the sound of a cat hunting for treats. So let's, you know, I could, yeah, I could just pull it, but nah, I don't want to do that. That's crazy. So, like with every crop, I really just slide the knife across the bottom. Look at that. <laughs> that's cool. Now let's go into the garden compost. That is nice. Look, it's like a doily, for God's sakes. It's nature's doily. 
Mm, smells good. Plants. Okay, so now this will just pull out. Ta-da! Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I'm sorry. <laughs> just look at that. Look at the roots on that thing. They just circled. Look at the... I'm sorry. Just, again, just look at that. Okay, so let's, this is like... This is so dense. Jeez, I think I actually need a knife. All just, uh, the roots are just like, you don't see them, but they've created this incredible strength. Okay, I could have ripped that more, but it, it really is like, impressive. Well, this is going to be go into the garden too. So that's a centerpiece, an edible centerpiece. Certainly would have eaten it sooner. It's just now starting to show some fungal moldy things going on, which just don't matter. Okay, so I will dispose of this for now. Come here, out of the way. We want to clean the sprouter and make sure that it was not in any way damaged by that massive crop. When I get the... Yeah, there's some unsprouted popcorn kernels here. Boy, you certainly weren't missed in that crop. Okay. Right. So, let's wash it. It's none the worse for wear to me. in our kitchen. So, like, this is a brush I use to clean certain things with different brushes for different purposes. But that's a handy thing, too. That brush also does not. We don't often use it with soap. So we want to rinse that out. Really clean. Looks good. I mean, I actually did wonder if this would hurt it, but no, the screen, I'm looking with this. I don't know if you can, I really don't think I can do this. It's, this camera does not focus that close, but I am curious to know what can happen. Good. No spreading, nothing. Right? Uh, it's a great sprouter. It really is. It's just a simple design. And durable. So there, you grow sprouts in it. Grow microgreens. Grow an incredible centerpiece. <laughs> I really like that. Thank you, Corn, for your incredible contribution to beauty and now to my compost heap. It's actually a bin, but 
There's a heap too. All right, that's it for corn shoots. Uh, you know, I just want to make the point that that's basically the way you grow any microgreen, any of the big seeds. So corn, peas, uh, sunflowers, buckwheat, grasses, oats, wheat, rye, whatever. Um, we soak those seeds and then we put them on a thoroughly moistened medium. I prefer the deep medium of coconut coir. And then you just keep them moist, just like we did with these. We keep them covered until they grow up. We actually uncovered these quite early because I planted them so high and it did not matter. So we're going to try that with sunflowers. I just have to say, I've been doing this for... I'm, I've lost count. It's 26. Tw I'm in my 27th year of sprouting and I am finding out things that I've always held to be truths, uh, to be questionable. So... I really want to impart that these videos are intended to teach you what to look for in a crop, not to say, do this many rinses, do this at this time, get to know the crop. It's easy. Just keep it, like in this case, we're just keeping the seeds moist, then we're keeping the medium moist and it grows. Give it light. So that's the idea. Question everything, even me. and. Um, we all live in unique places, unique climates, and that will affect your crop. You know, we've done a, a broccoli video where it was done in six rinses. That's like crazy. It's a, it's a good 10, it's generally a 10 rinse crop and 11 is not out of hand, but six. Wow. But you got to be ready for that stuff. You just look at them. They're done. They're done. You can eat them anytime. As soon as they're soaked, they're healthy. You can't miss. It's all good. Once it's so once a seed soaks up its fill of water, it is alive. It is transformed from a dormant seed to a living thing, capable of incredible power. You look around, it's, they grow into these plants that grow more seeds if you let them. I mean, one pea will produce hundreds of peas, and one broccoli will produce thousands of broccoli seeds. But that's a different video. I do go on. Hope you enjoyed this one and happy sprouting, happy growing. Grow more often.